guys, I'm Silvio and this is part 4 of do-it-yourself street lamps for your Christmas villages using LEDs and this will be the last part of this mini series and also a natural link between this mini series and the next one focused on 3D modeling and 3D printing, simple props simple 3D modeling, simple and easy 3D printing for uh, props, sorry, for your Christmas villages. But first, part four. I will need to do a quick recap before uh, trying to show you how I get to the solution for the new street lamp. And that will be the link I was talking to you some seconds ago. Uh, this quick recap is necessary because I wasn't that clear at some points in part 3. It's only my fault, my bad, I'm sorry for that. And also because the camera up there, the Sony camera, had some sound problems <laughs> at some focus point. So I was here with the street lamp A and street lamp B, the new one. And I show you how to get there using a and modifying the street lamp and adding the wires and the T connector. The same thing with this one. How to connect this street lamp to the power sector. A power source directly connected to the wall plug. And I told you I will follow this particular schema there. Positive and negative wires and street lamps connected in parallel there. To avoid the need of using an AC adapter more than 3 volts. Where to start? I'm, you will need a power supply. So this is not obviously suited for a 3 volt uh, LED. My power source is 220 volts, your maybe 110 or 212. It all depends where you are in the world. So I will need a AC adapter, a multi-switching AC adapter. What those means? Multi-switching means that you can select from 3 volts to 12 volts. And this particular AC adapter has a maximum uh, output of one of 2,000, let me be more precise, yes, 2,000 milli amps so 2 amps because 2000 milliamps equals 2 amps so this is done you need to plug the switch once you have selected the 3 volts into the power supply okay then you will switch it on and it comes on i have a little led inside there then Obviously, I cannot use this street lamp here with a T connector. Where do I plug it? Where do I clamp it? The output there, the output plug there, is a 5.5 by 2.1, 5.5 by 2.1 millimeters. It means that the outer diameter of the plug is 5.5 and the inner diameter, the hole you have there and the hole you have there is 2.1 millimeters. So external 5.5, internal 2.1. And this power, these AC adapters of the plugs and that is the standard unit measure for these plugs. So it is the same plugs used in CCTV. Okay? 
CCTV or camera, or control camera, use those plugs. And the standard is 5.5 by 2.1 millimeters. It is the standard. So how can I get from this to, need, to the power I need, to the wires I need, to those two parallel wires I need? Very easy. I use this plug here, guys. And this plug here is transforming. And this is a female plug. This is called a male plug, obviously. And then you have a female, something protruding, something to insert it in something else. It's like human anatomy, okay? Male and female. So, with the AC adapter, uh, I have a male plug. I will need a female plug, that is the opposite of the, the one, always 5.5 five by 2.1, that has a plus and a minus, that has a positive and a negative way of attaching some wires. And in this case, plus is here, minus is there, positive is there, negative is the opposite one, and the blue, the blue wire I choose it is connected to the positive and the white one is connected to the negative. So I will simply need to do this, insert the plug like that, and then here I have the parallel wires. The blue is the positive, like in the schema there, and the white is the negative, like that. Yes, this is a very long wire, that's why I've uh, unrolled it like that, but this is a very, very long wire, I think more than four meters. This doesn't have to be on top of the layout of your Christmas village. It will be under everything, on the floor maybe, or on some bench, whatever, wherever you want. The important is to have uh, the, uh, the uh, parallel wires, the blue and the white, white in this case, but the color is not important, okay? You can also have uh, black and white, uh, blue and green, uh, yellow and purple. <laughs> don't, you don't need to have exactly the same color. The important is to remember which one of the two wires is the positive one. Okay? In my case, it is the blue one. And I was saying the uh, part of these uh, long wire, the two wires will be under everything, but the majority of it will be on top of the layout, where you will need to place the street lamps. Okay, uh, in my particular case, I use to hide this, wi this wire, uh, making a groove into the styrofoam. But that's uh, only a problem of hiding the wires, and if you use a styrofoam, you can dig holes and uh, hide everything. So, what you will need? You will need to remember the blue, that is the positive, and the negative, that is the white. In this case, as I told you, the red is the positive, a T-connector, is like that, a T-connector, the wiring is like that, and then if I take another color, maybe the black, you will get this connection here. So this part here is what is down there. So one wire is connected to this parallel here and another one is connected to this one. In this case, I've uh, choose to have, that's why T connector, imagine that is a T and here you have the second T. That's the reason it is <laughs> a T connector, okay? 
So in this case, I have red here, yellow there. So red it is on the right side. And the right side, it is if you open the connector, connected to the parallel wire that is near you. And the yellow one is connected to the parallel wire that is far from you. Okay, near you, far from you. So in this case, if the red is the positive and the blue is the positive, I will need to go with this solution, blue there and white there. Let me go with this solution. So the blue is near me and maybe I will do a little zoom as always like that okay so um, the blue is uh, towards me and the white is far from me like that then I will clip the wires and the T connector doesn't cut the wire it simply pinch the two wires to the um, metal to the copper connectors inside so it simply make a cut on the um, on the protection on the plastic on the PVC or in my case on the um, silicone that cover the wire and I simply pinch this together like that until you hear a click then you simply need to okay the wire inside isn't perfectly horizontal so this is not a science uh, and you need sometimes to reopen everything and reposition everything Okay, so positive is towards me. Like that. Then I will talk to you about the dimension of these wires. Okay. Like that. And the um, street lamps uh, gets lighted on. Then I did the same thing with the other one, so always red towards me, but you can have the opposite. You can choose to connect the red on the left and the yellow on the right. In this case you will need to switch blue and white. But once you get everything together, you can understand. If I invert this one, I don't need to have always red and yellow on the same side. It is better like, like that. But in, imagine that one of your street lamps, you inverted yellow. Then you simply need, you inverted yellow and red. Then you simply need, instead of having the blue towards you, to have the blue towards far, far from you. It's simply a matter of remembering the positive and the negative. And then I will need to choose another position for the street lamp and do exactly the same thing. So blue towards me and white far from me. And also the second one will switch on and so on. Okay, now I told you that the wires I use for connecting the LED to the T connector are 24 AWG. Okay, 24 AWG. Okay, American wire gouge. Okay, it is a standard everywhere in the world. And I also told you that I'm using 18. AWG for the parallel wires for the blue and white in this case but the T connectors here uh, I have a particular um, 
um, version of these connectors that are not standard. I bought them more than six years ago, so it was a particular brand that I cannot find anymore. Those T connectors are suited to be used with wires from 20 to 24 AWG. It means AWG. It means that the thinner can be 24 and the thicker can be 20. Those numbers are inverted. The higher the number, the thinner the section is. The lower the number, the thicker it is. So thick, thin, thick, thin. So maximum thickness will be 20, minimum thickness will be 24. I use an 18, it is a little too thick. So it is preferable to use this wire range. Normally you can use the same 24 and 24. Or maybe if you want to get even better, you can go down to 26 AWG. That is one measure below the standard. It doesn't mean it will not work. It simply means that uh, you have a thinner wire inside there. Okay, but the classical range of the T connectors you will find commonly on uh, Amazon, on uh, eBay, on every marketplace is between 20 and 24 AWG. Okay, and uh, another thing I'm used to go with 18, but it is not a standard measure. If you want to get precise, be in this range also with the parallel on wires, okay? And if you want to have a more distance between the two, don't go below 26 AWG. That is the um, thinner wire um, usable in this case, because otherwise under that thickness, it will not, the copper metal inside will not pinch correctly the wires inside, okay? The uh, copper wires are inside the protection, the plastic protection. And then use silicon covered wires. Oh, that is all. If it is clear that if you have this distance there, you are not fixed with this distance. I simply need to reopen the T connector, it will lose connectivity, and then go ahead with maybe I will choose a distance very far. Let's think about that. Blue positive. And negative. I don't know exactly the distance, but it is far, far, far from the first uh, from the first uh, um, street lamp I have just connected. But if I use the, it, the connector there, that is, as you can see, the spires there very far from the first one. You simply need to click once again, and the street lamp gets lighted on. But I'm far from that one. So the distance between two street lamps is not fixed. It is calling a sliding, sliding. Uh, you can slide the connectors onto the parallel wires. You can place the first one there. Okay, but then the second one, you can slide it forward and backward as you wish. It is not fixed. The T connectors are removable. Okay, not like, sorry, in this case, the maximum distance between those two Lamax street lamps is, let's say, 30 centimeters, 32 centimeters, 32, 33 centimeters. 
and you can place them very close so you are not seeing anything let me go once again a little more out 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 let's say like that and i was saying the distance the maximum distance between the two street lamps is 33 let's say 33 centimeters then you can also approach them but the maximum distance is that one in this case you don't have to uh, to bother the distance because you simply need to detach and reattach and that's all here i am again guys during the past two seasons you have seen how important has become 3d printing for my christmas villages i was at the point where every single day i was thinking if only i could find that particularly shaped building if only i could find that particular figurine doing that particular action if only i could find that particular props or that particular street lamp but i wasn't able to find them simply because Limax or limax doesn't have them on catalog nor department 56 or any other brands had them on catalog and i felt a little no more than a little limited frustrated because i couldn't improve my christmas villages i couldn't go where i visualized it i wanted to go yes i could have continued using styrofoam and i will always continue using styrofoam but styrofoam is well suited for planar buildings for planar surfaces not uh, rounded surface not rounded buildings nor uh, rounded the pole as um, a street lamp as or spherical that's why i decided that it was time to start 3d printing yes simple to say 3d printing and a lot of you out there are scared by switching to the 3d printing but it is for two simple reasons a you don't know what is 3d printing the principle behind 3D printing. B, you may think, yes, I can buy a 3D printer, but how can I get something to 3D print? So you have two solutions. You know where to find them, some, maybe more than two solutions. Someone else, you ask someone else to model something for you. You know someone who could model something for you. Or three, four or five, you can start 3D modeling by yourself. And that's where you need to go if you really want to improve. Because what you visualize isn't what it is in the ability of someone else to model. You need to get what you need by yourself. And I know, I'm scared by that. It is scaring simply because you needed to uh, to deal with a, a couple of new software that you are used to uh, to use. Sorry for uh, the term. And maybe you think achieving this design here is scaring for you. Maybe yes, if you doesn't approach it like you should approach it. So I'm limiting this intro there because this will be a link with the next mini series, as I told you. But don't be scared because it's not that difficult. Believe me. Yes, you are thinking you have 20 more years of experience with the 3D printing. No, I just have three years of experience in 3d printing but i have 20 more years of experience in 3d modeling but i'm not using advanced 3d modeling technique for my uh, christmas village i use a simple basic techniques that's why you don't have to be scared i will try to show you with the next mini series how simple it is to get whatever you want. Let me show you 
very quickly and please don't be scared by what you will see because you will see a particular software that can be shocking when you see a 3d modeling software but don't please trust me just for once not during the rest of the year the rest of the season but for this time please trust me i will get my glasses and switch to the to the screen here i am let's get to this okay guys this is the appearance we'll have a 3d modeling software i know there is plenty of icons there is plenty of menus there is plenty of everything thousands and thousands of icons thousands and thousands of things to start learning but it's not like that and this is particularly it is rhinoceros 7 or rhino 3d as it is called and this particular version of this 3d software is licensed it needs a license and it's not the cheapest one the license is around 1000 euros or 1000 usd but there are plenty of free uh, software that you can use to model something okay and generally i use simply a bunch of uh, tools to model my uh, my props and this is a page it is simply divided in four windows it is four views because generally when you uh, design when you model when you draw something in architecture or in technical design you just don't you just don't uh, need a simple view like a top view because the model you need to see it from every where so you need a top a front a right and a perspective let me show you the street lamp the street lamp i model it and you have seen is the following one and maybe in this perspective there you will recognize it yes there is a small difference between this one and the one I've used it as a prototype, it is the top. It was missing something more um, more Victorian, so I have even these on top of the uh, top cover there. And this model can be seen also from the top view. And just from the top view, you can see that it is simple, something circular, something that you cannot uh identify but from the front view it's like having the a photo a picture of it you can see the profile of the um of the uh street lamp and even from the other side the right side at the as this is symmetrical you get something that is like that and it is similar so you can identify that this may be a street lamp from this view from the front view also but not from the top view and those view you can't you simply can just move around you can slide left and right up and down this one too you can but you can't rotate around so you will need also the perspective and to get a catch of what uh, the street lamp will be once uh, model at what's finished modeling and once 3d printed and you simply move these with your mouse and you get everything you need to know with your mouse okay and you can rotate and you can go in every direction to see what the street lamp will be i've simply used three or four of these tools there and that's what i will show you in the next mini series how simple it is to model something like that this particular 
uh, street lamp is composed and you can see from here that it has uh, you are actually seeing the total there but the total is composed by a base a cage a pole and the cover and the glass let me rephrase that the base it is this one the base okay guys the base is nothing else than the initial part i have shown you to be glued then what is the cage it is what is on the top of the street lamp and that is something that is around the glass that you have inside then you also have a pole that is in this case it is inverted but it is the part there let me get the pole there A little towards there and let me switch on the total there and the perspective there like that okay you can see the pole there that I place it in this way to 3d printing but it is uh, you simply need to rotate it so the pole is like that I will go quickly in order to show you the components I've used, but like that. And the perspective. So you can recognize that I've shown you the, the base. This is the pole that goes with the central part. Then the cage that I have shown you there. Okay, the cage. will be on top of everything like that okay like that I'm voluntarily getting everything detached okay and the base also switch it on and then I will move the base there. And then same thing with the cover that is too big. So I will transform scale 3D a little more like that. on top of there and then the glass that is what is diffusing the light that is this particular object there that I can rotate because it is inverted and then I can place it inside there it goes inside and so you have all the elements now that is composing the lamp i have exploded it voluntarily so you have the base the pole the cage okay and then the glass and then the top cover and uh, yes but how i modeled that how to model that thing i will switch off the total and I will get everything switched off and I will show you simply the base there okay the base like that and the pool switched off okay this is how appears 
the base from every from every side and also here in the rendered section like that. It may seem complex to achieve that design, but just remember, always remember that this is symmetrical. Okay, what I mean by symmetrical. Let me switch on the curves. Okay, just look at this profile there. You can, if I move this, you can recognize that this profile here is nothing more than the profile you have here, the border you have here. So I didn't model a, a disk, another disk, a cylinder, a cone, etc. I simply modeled a profile like this one. Follow me for a moment. I took this profile here and I've told the software, use this and turn it around a center pole and let me show what is the, the solid, what is the volume you can obtain. So I told the software to revolve because this is told revolving and you can see if i stay here you can choose revolve with the left uh, button of the mouse and then it asks me for a center of rotation simply i then it ask it, uh, it is asking me here on top starting from what angle because this is geometry and it is zero okay do I need to revolve it for some angles or just 360? I told him 360. And then I confirm it. And you can see now that I have two times the same shape. So it's just a matter of analyzing an object and try to find the perfect solution to model it. This was particular complex design. If I had to model a cylinder, then two inverted cylinder here. So the first part, it is like having a cylinder there, then a two inverted cylinder, then another cylinder that it is rounded or shaped. Then what else? Some other cylinders rounded or maybe some torus that is a particular geometric form. So then unifying all of them, it is very complex, yes, but you simply need to imagine that it is always symmetrical. You can cut it in different parts and you will get it like that, okay? Let me try another thing. This one... I will hide this one, and this one is the one I just made simply by revolving this object, this profile here, for 360 degrees. It's like having a slice, a slice, like in, in cooking, a slice, and then revolving the slice around the pole, around the center, and you get something that has an hole inside. You can see that I can show you that it has an hole. That's what I needed because the wires get through here. And I obtained that revolving something here, revolving this around 360 degrees around the pole having a distance between the green line that you see and the first line. What I'm talking about. Let me do another specular version of this one. So I simply used specular like a glass 
to have the same form, the same profile here. And I will explode this profile and instead of using this line, I will go for a different profile. like that then here then here then I will join everything together you can see the difference now in the profile this one is going from the green line that is the center and this one no if I choose to use the same technique so revolve this profile along the deer starting here on top here from zero yes to 360 yes what i obtained i obtained something that has no more hole in the middle no more hole in the middle too difficult maybe yes but this is how i obtained this with a simple use of uh of classic basic um geometry okay but it's limit to this difficulty you simply need to understand some basic principle okay but the geometry is mandatory let me do let me do something completely different for you, okay? Let me show you what I can achieve with simple geometry. Everyone knows what is a square. So I model a square. This is a square. And even in 3D, it is a square, simply a square. It is the one of the easiest geometrical form you can achieve. But if I then tell to the software to extrude something, what is an extrusion? I take a form and I decide to not have it on the plane but on the space and to give this simple four geometrical form an eight you can see in this window here the perspective that it can grow and it can get it can achieve an eight and by pure chance you have a cube now, starting from the simple image possible. This can be very easily the base of a new street lamp. Let's say yes. Okay. Uh, let me get something more. I need a pole, so I need a cylinder. A cylinder what is nothing more than a circle so I will go with a circle like that and then I will tell the same way I did to transform this in a cylinder if I take a circle and I give it a nate I obtain a cylinder like that let me move the cylinder a little down in order to have the cylinder that comes up that comes uh, from the top and from the down 
and then I will get the cylinder and tell the software with booleans and booleans is something you learn in middle school to unify something to different something and to get just the intersection let me show you I want a hole so I tell the program the software take the cube and it is highlighted in yellow use the difference and subtract the cylinder from the cube then I simply hit enter on the keyboard voila what you get is a cube with inside a hole okay nothing difficult there I can go back with Ctrl Z and now I have the cube that is that is there but if I wanted to preserve the pole that, that is very beautiful okay let me redo it cube difference and I got it cut now I want the pole this is the base of my strange street lamp and in the middle here I have always the first the first curve okay let me do another circle always in the middle but with a diameter a little little diameter okay take a circle a second circle and then i use the same as i used it before extrude give these two circle an eight and i go up 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 like that and what you get you get a cylinder that it is no more cylinder it is a pipe and that's the difference a circle get let me redo this curve like that a cylinder gets um, a circle if extruded if given thickness makes a cylinder a plain cylinder two concentric circle gives a pipe a, no, a, a cylinder with a hole inside like this simple geometry guys so this is how you need to get whatever you want it may seem very difficult the first time but it's not that difficult and if you want to get an approach a different approach i suggest you to go to the site Tinkercad that is a free online 3D modeling software and I click on create 3D design and it will open an online space it's not divided in uh, in uh, in views as the previous one but it is very simple and maybe you need to start from this you have simple shapes and this particular software start online that is tinkercad okay tinkercad.com use directly 3d and 
3D shapes. Let me take a cube like that and I have a cube already designed and it can be a solid or a whole. Let me get a cylinder to you on top of the surface and I will make it smaller and maybe taller like this one and then I will move it here in plain middle of the circle of, of the not in plain middle almost in plain me control Z if you make a mistake and maybe I can align that the center maybe align it like that and then I have a solid that it is the cube and I have another solid that it is the cylinder I transform the cylinder not only in a solid but in a hole and then I choose the cube the cylinder I shift and click both of them and then I use simply group and when you group uh, solid and a hole you attain a hole in the cylinder a hole in the cube sorry this is very simple this is as basic um, shape and then obviously you can go back and you can multiply this one in order here duplicate and repeat I duplicated the cylinder now I can move the cylinder apart okay like that and once again solid and whole I take the cylinder and I extra and I subtract it from the cube I get this one and then if I move once again the cylinder I can get the pole inside you can't achieve precise shapes with this Maybe you can also design something very strange that will transform it in a, in a strange shape. But you will start understanding the principle, the mechanism of the 3D modeling. Think I can. Very simple, very basic shapes not a, a lot of tools as the one i've shown you but you can do some uh, you, you can play with it it has basic shapes it has design starters like something you want to analyze please try to get into 3d modeling with this software here that is very basic very simple very free with simple things to do and the important thing is that this software has understood that everything is by joining two pieces or by subtracting something to something else now here I have the cylinder and I have the cube in red and if I and I, they are two separate objects because they can move but if i select the cube there then the cylinder and then i group them together i obtain red and it is one single maybe this can be a number let me redo that okay and let me enlarge this Okay, like that let me enlarge this let me move this a little more like that and maybe you can get something like a number like that okay very basic uh, done etc but you can understand the principle of 3d modeling you have also hardware 
you have uh, gears, uh, you have a chain, you have cogs, uh, and other things, and ball bearings, etc. Very basic, but you will understand that what you will need to do for everything you need to make for your Christmas village, that is props, not figurines, I'm talking about the props, about buildings, is nothing else than standard shapes that you can modify. You didn't have here in the basic shapes uh, this form here, but it is simple uh, cube that has an elongate side. And you can modify it also a sphere. You can modify it and obtain something that is maybe a little different. Okay, but you have the, the basics and you can get through everything. Maybe this can be a Zeppelin at some point. Okay, and you can get something different, etc. These tools are used to model something that is not organic. Okay, so no figurines, no animals, nothing else. Or if you want to get to something more complex, you can also decide to switch to Blender, that is also a free software. Okay. And you can switch to four views or simply one view like that if you prefer. I simply switch it Ctrl Alt Q and I have a four. And this also is free, completely free, more complicated than Tinkercad, less complicated than uh, than uh, Rhino that uh, you have seen here. But also with this one, you can achieve the same thing. You can use modifier and you can let, let me see if I can show you even with this one a cylinder like that then you can take the cylinder and move it around as I did before And then I will add a modifier. I will add a boolean. And I will tell the take the cube, add a modifier, a boolean. And then I will choose the picker and then choose the cylinder and then choose apply. And the cube as an all but this one leave the cylinder where it is so tinker tinker card here free software if you want to start with 3d modeling and then a blender you can google it and you, it is completely free a little more complex but i will stand forever with my reno with my round. Reno 3D or rhinoceros. Complex, not that complex. Don't you don't need to do scared. First time you get on the wheel, first time you get on a bicycle without the rear wheels, there is always a first time you simply need to affront to to do to face everything with the proper spirit. And then you get everything you want to know. And for Blender and for Tinkercad, you have plenty of videos of tutorials online. And it's not like 20 more years ago that I started with Reno and there wasn't any um, tutorial online. So I had to learn everything by myself. Today you will get videos and tutorial about Rhino, but essentially for Blender and for, for Tinkercad also plenty of tutorials that will explain to you. The quickest thing you can do is use Tinkercad with simple basic movements, with simple basic uh, shapes, etc. Then maybe you, win, you want to go uh, towards uh, Blender for everything else. And Blender can model uh, geometrical shapes or even uh, 
humanoids so sh um, organic shapes like animals or people okay but thinkercad no guys so let me switch again to the main camera there and let me remove my glasses very complex for some of you but these will end the part four and we'll introduce the next mini series focus on 3d modeling and 3d printing from the basics up to whatever you want i also use this part four to maybe wait for your comments and do you know something in particular you want to start from let me let me know in the comments down below because otherwise i will start from the basics from the circle from the uh, triangle from the square and then go up there and try to model something maybe the street lamp from a to z or maybe some other things like a park bench or like something else but you need to be to train a little more a little bit your brain to face something unknown maybe i know i can be this can be hard but please once again don't be scared i i wasn't scared 20 years ago when i started and there is no one helping me and i switched to 3d printing three years ago guys and you know what i made during these last two seasons so please don't forget to subscribe comment and give big thumbs up thank you for watching thank you for bearing my once again little awful english and see you in the next near future future sorry very future or a new mini series but only if you really wish bye guys <laughs>